Hey guys, it's Morgan here at Highland Cycles. Welcome back to the weekly schlag. We are back working on dirt bikes, working on cool stuff. And actually today we are working on the beautiful, sexy RZ350. So it's not a dirt bike, but it's super, super cool because it is a two stroke. Uh, had a great time at the Weeby racing round over in Monta Vista. Foxy bibs beat the crap out of me. So yeah, that happens. <laughs> Still had a blast. Thank you guys so much. Um, this is our little motorcycle shop here in Western Colorado where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff. Sometimes we get Zach to talk. Sometimes we get Leander to yell at us. The dogs will fight, hopefully, if we can make that happen. And uh, we have a ton of fun. So if that sounds like a good time, stick with us. Here we go. All right, first up on the lift is the RZ350 1985. Uh, it came in with an oil leak from the uh, oil tank. Um, so we took care of that. Uh, the customer also said though, he's like, man, it just seems like it's kind of off sometimes. Sometimes it runs good, sometimes it's off. Uh, I was just wondering if you could maybe uh, take a look at that. So pulled spark plugs. One was definitely a different color than the other dug in deep and found that the exhaust gaskets are uh, leaking on both sides, worse on one side than the other. Um, the thing about a two stroke is that seal is very important to the way the thing runs. Um, if you're gonna argue that there's a bad thing about two strokes, that might be one thing. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain because if you get a little bit of a leak there, it can actually lean things out. Four strokes do the same thing, it's just not as bad. So uh, we got all new seals, uh, let's see. So we got all new seals, also the seals that go in there for the pipe. So let's take that stuff off and take a look. All right guys, we got the headers off and just wanna show you, this one was leaking bad. You can see it's missing part of the gasket up there, peeled off of it, uh, blew out. And I think it's because this nut was loose. Um, it's the inside nut on that. Uh, cylinder on this left hand cylinder was loose. So I've got the flanges in the ultrasonic and ready to cook those for a little bit. I'm gonna get in here and uh, do a super deep, deep clean on these uh, surfaces on the cylinders. Get everything all shined up, cleaned up, ready to go. And then we got all new seals. Um, you can also see this seal. Uh, there you go, you can see it blown out right there. So the whole thing was leaking, causing this side to lean out a little bit, making it not run so great. So get all this dialed in. Um, we got the oil tank leak solved. That's not leaking anymore. Uh, put a new hose on it and a new, um, it's actually the depth or oil level gauge, but it has a new um, grommet here goes on there. So I think we'll be ready to rock and roll and I'll take you guys for a spin with me. All right, we got her all buttoned up. Um, I ended up finding out that the, that nut that was loose is actually stripped out. So we got all new nuts across the, um, those flanges, new seals, uh, new gaskets, everything. This thing should run quite a bit better. Got it all shined up a little bit, got my fingerprints off of it. Now I'm gonna take it for a spin, uh, make sure everything works good. Um, I don't actually have my GoPro. So uh, I'm just gonna set this camera out and you can just, you'll be able to hear me zing by. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. So the RZ runs really, really good. Uh, very, very happy with how that thing runs. I think uh, getting those pipes sealed up made a big difference. Um, yeah, anyway. If you guys ever have a chance to ride a twin two-stroke street bike, I highly recommend it. It's <laughs> it's super rad. Um, got uh, more work to do here mechanic-wise, but I'm gonna shoot uh, start shooting the video of the Death March here. So if you guys are interested and you wanna know what the Death March is, make sure you subscribe. Um, also follow us on Facebook and Instagram because it's a big deal. This is our 15th year. It's gonna be a big year. It's gonna be awesome. Next on the lift is this uh, KTM 250SXF. Uh, this bike has been here before uh, quite a few times, owned by a good friend of ours. And uh, we just worked on it 
what do we do? It had been sitting for quite a while. We got it running. It actually turned out it ran just fine. Uh, he was riding it. Oh, yeah, this is the one we put the new exhaust on, guys. I forgot about that. Uh, it had the big hole back in here. Um, running good. He said he was riding it. Started bogging down. Uh, and then wouldn't run. <laughs> and uh, you can kick it over, but I was just kicking it, and it's really hard to kick. It doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like it's just a ton of friction, but it's way too hard to kick. Uh, my first thought was like, oh, let's check the oil. Um, it's got plenty of that in there. Uh, I can't, anyway. Lots of oil. That's not a problem. So I'm concerned. This is an older bike. I think it's an 11. And uh, we were hoping maybe it was just a fuel pump situation. Uh, because I don't think he's ever changed the fuel pump. And I don't think it was changed before him. So... Uh, kind of hoping that, you know, maybe it's just a fuel pump or something like that. But, uh, like I said, I can't even, I can't make it start. And it's really, really hard to kick. So we're going to take the seat and tank off and take the valve cover off is where we're going to start. I'm a little bit concerned that maybe we have a bit of an issue um, going on there. Yeah, it's a bummer. So, anyway, we're going to find out together. All right, guys, next thing to check is uh coolant because you know when things stop running sometimes it's because they're out of coolant but this one has plenty which is good that's always a good sign also this is a good check guys so the uh air compressor is running right now let me know what you think about this sound quality uh using this mic with that air compressor uh so yeah i think the next thing is take this valve cover off i think we found the culprit or at least started to find the culprit so uh, rolling the motor over here and I don't know, it's really hard there we go uh, let me here's my flashlight you see right there you can see the ridge on that exhaust cam and you can see the wear on that intake and the far one it's hard to see camera's not really doing it justice but trust me they're worn and there's a ridge if you feel like there you can actually feel a ridge so my guess is the bottom end uh, is scored up too now why that's a good question because it's oily up here super oily um, you know and it was running fine until it wasn't. I and mean, like there's oil everywhere here. There's plenty of oil in the motor. I don't know, but needs a minimum of a top end, probably a crank. To, I'm guessing it's just gonna be, anyway, big money. And we're gonna call him, figure out what's uh, going on. And then, uh, yeah, see what he wants to do. Check this thing out, guys. Honda Trail 110 super rad 1984 uh ct 110 uh just came in uh the this piece the perch for the brake was broken uh we ended up able to find one on ebay it's not perfect it's got a little bit different stuff it's got some light switches on it that the other one didn't because the stock this year at least had all the lights over here and then just the on off over here so i had to modify the wiring harness cut those out and just run the two wires down for the kill switch. Uh, but let's see if this thing's gonna start. It's been sitting, they said, for a while. They wanted me to fire it up, make sure it runs. And here is the kicker. A lot of you guys are probably gonna be excited to hear this. This bike is gonna be for sale. So, if you're interested, email me at morgan at highland-cycles.com. Uh, who knows, by the time this video comes out, it may be gone. We've already had a lot of people looking. Gotta love our old Honda four-stroke, guys. Arguably one of the greatest <laughs> motors ever built. The 110, 50, all, you know, they're all the same. They're so incredible. It's got the high-low on it. Uh, you can see the high-low range there. Sweet bike. It even still has the gas, the extra gas can on it. I, uh, who knows, maybe I'll try to buy it. <laughs> uh, this thing is so, so cool. 
yeah, I really like this thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go take it for a test ride. Um, this is one of the joys of my job. I love getting to work on things like this. It's just so rad. Next on the lift is this 350 XCF uh, KTM 2015 is this one. Um, <clears throat> and this gentleman just bought this bike and it's new to him and he just wants us to check it out and make sure it's all good. Uh, it's got the classic valve cover leak <laughs> uh, that all KTM four strokes seem to have even when they're brand new. Uh, so we're going to take care of that for sure, check his valves, uh, and then just kind of go through the whole thing, make sure it's all good. I don't know if he's got any other uh, for sure concerns, but uh, one thing, oh, he's got a cooling fan for us to install, but only if his other bill doesn't go too far up. So we're going to start with the valve cover seal and uh, move from there. All right, guys. <laughs> we're... Uh, uh, checking the valves real fast on this guy. Uh, I've shown this a lot of times, so I'm not going to go super in-depth, but quick note, it's four to six thousandths on the intake, six to eight thousandths on the exhaust. It's a, good, it's a good rule of thumb, just period, on most of these modern four-strokes. If you can get in that range, the bike's going to run just fine. It may not be the exact um, uh, clearance that the book calls for, but it's going to be really, really close. So. Uh, get this checked and then I'm going to show you how we're going to get that seal, um, the cover, <clears throat> excuse me, the valve cover gasket to stop leaking. He wants to ride this thing and I don't have a gasket so we're just going to make this one work. I'll show you how we do that here in just a second. Uh, it's unfortunate these things leak all the time. It's so annoying. And uh, new ones, if you put a brand new one on it usually lasts for a while. But um, anyway, I don't have one so I'll show you are going to do that. Let me check these real fast to make sure they're okay. All right, guys, uh, valves are all in spec, all good. I expected that because it does run fine. Now we're going to take care of this. Like I said, uh, the best way to do it is just to get a new gasket. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so we're going to go this way. So take the gasket off, take the cover off, and we're going to take these two parts and put them in the ultrasonic and get them super, super clean. Then we're going to come over here and... Ooh. There we go. The, oh, focus. There we go. I'm uh, going to clean this surface really, really well. Um, it's not super easy to do. You're going to have to get in here, probably put like a screwdriver in there to really get back in and all the nooks and crannies and get it all super clean and dry. But we're going to go around, take very good care of making sure this is all really clean. because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some uh, Yamabond uh, gasket maker to help seal this thing up. Now, that is not the ideal situation because it will make it goopy the next time <laughs> we take this thing apart, but uh, it will keep it from leaking right now. This guy will get to ride his motorcycle without oil going everywhere. Uh, and then it will be my situation to deal with the next time he brings it in and that's okay I won't charge him any extra because I know that I'm the one that did it um, But I will also show you a way to help with that uh, so that it's not such a big deal So anyway, let me go put this in the ultrasonic get it all cleaned up and be right back All right guys, we got the uh, cover out of the ultrasonic bath now. I'm gonna spray it off with some brake clean And really what I'm doing here is just getting all the water off of it this uh, brake clean we use, well any brake clean, is going to be super uh, volatile, so it's going to dry things out really fast. Blow it out. Same with the gasket. One thing to make sure you look for uh, on these is these little grommets like to fall off, so don't lose those. Okay. So it's gonna fall off now, but whatever. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some 1184. Three bond 1184, which is also Yam bond. We're gonna take a tiny little thin bead and run it all the way around in there. This is gonna take a while, so enjoy the time lapse. There we go. Now, uh, for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and install it. 
I'm not going to do all the waiting, which is going to happen on the next one, because this has that little tang in the seal that goes down in and it's going to help seal that up. And honestly, I don't care if this gets stuck in this cover like really well, that's okay for me. So, because you know, when you pull it off, check the files, put it back on, it's okay if it's stuck really tight into the cover, it comes off the head just fine. Right. So, now we're gonna take our 1184, now we're gonna put another bead around on this side, and we're gonna let it sit for like 10 minutes after we're done. All right now, we'll let it sit. I uh, got the valve cover all sealed up, you can see. Uh, I definitely can see a little bit of the goo that's squeezed out, but when you uh, let it sit like that and make it nice and tacky, it doesn't squirt out everywhere. It also doesn't stick quite as tight, which is good because then it means when I take it off, it won't be all gnarly all over there. Uh, next thing on this bike is installing this Trail Tech fan. It's all spread out anyway. I'll show you how we're going to do that. It's pretty cool on these, this is the way they have it set up. Uh, it's anyway, it works out great. You don't need a special bracket or anything like that. Let me uh, get the fan. I'll show you how it works. All right, guys, here's the fan. And here are the cool little things that attach it. So these just go through the radiator fins like whoop, through there. And then we got these washers butt up against that and then these are the little things that spin on there that are this whole thing's like threaded anyway i'll show you here just one second all right guys check it out so we got washers on the back sides we got these coming through and we're going to pull these things through uh until obviously these are down tight and then i'm going to take these screw them on and then we'll cut the excess off this uh, side all right, guys, check it out. Got those all done. I uh, would just come in here with some dikes. Can you even say dikes anymore? <laughs> I made Zach laugh. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yes. All right, so I've got the fan on, got the radiator brace. Uh, remounted so that's ready to go it's SRT style so now let me just show you how this is gonna work we got these wires I got to put on the battery and then that runs right up here you run the power here to the uh, thermometer or th to the excuse me to the switch that goes to the uh, thermostat reading like the temperature sensor right there goes in the um, into the radiator like that then that comes back and then that goes power here. And so what you do is you set it. It shows right now it's 88 degrees. So to set it, you hold this down. There we go. You can go Fahrenheit or Celsius. We're gonna go Fahrenheit. Now you just leave it. You don't hold it down. I was playing with this before. Just gotta let it go. There you go. Now it goes to 150. What we're gonna do is we're going to go down to 195 and there we go set ready to go and uh, now i'm going to route all those wires and clean them all up and make them look nice then we're going to put this uh tank on we're going to hook it up to the battery and then i'm going to run it and make sure it works that's the thing when you put these things on a lot of times guys you just got to make sure it all works it generally this is uh you know good stuff and it doesn't have problems but uh, it was probably built in China, so we want to make sure it's good. And then once we feel good about the whole thing, we're going to mount this into the radiator shroud. And they send you with a little uh, template, so you can put that in there. Uh, and then this will just push into the radiator shroud. It's got these little tabs on the sides that will help hold it in. So we'll cut a little nice rectangle in the radiator shroud, put that in, and that'll look nice. So let me finish routing all this stuff. Run. 
on, I believe, until it goes below 195. Let's watch and see. <laughs> There you go, 192, dropped it down. Let's see, it might actually come back up. That's kind of what happens sometimes. Oh no, it's gonna drop. Anyway, everything's working great. Now, I had to move the fan down a little bit further. It's right up against the valve cover now, so it could make checking valves kind of a pain in the butt. Might have to move the <coughs> um, radiator forward uh, to do that again. Not a big deal, it's just two bolts and just like push it forward, not actually take it off uh, but now I got to route these wires they don't look good um, and also I got to figure out how to mount this thing into this plastic I think I can I think I can do it um, it's just with this situation with how tight this tank is it's kind of a pain in the butt um, and I couldn't put it up higher because it was hitting there so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna route these wires up and maybe put that sensor uh, right up in here all right, guys, next on the lift is my lovely old 300. Uh, the reason it's up here is I'm getting it ready for the death march. I just washed it off, finally, <laughs> after, oh, gosh, a bunch of riding and then also the race in Monta Vista and anyway, whatever. Uh, but I'm getting ready for the death march. Um, I already got my helmet ready. You guys saw that. Now um, I changed the oil, cleaned the air filter. It's really pretty much all I got to do. I lube the chain um, after I washed it. And that's pretty much it because I got mooses in the tires. I don't have to worry about that. I am going to be running these. Whoa. I am going to be running these uh, Bridgestone X31s for one more ride. Uh, put those on right before the Shady Burrow. That was 160 miles of racing. Uh, and then riding in between that and Monta Vista, then Monta Vista was like 40 miles of racing. And I like the way these things are working. They're definitely getting pretty worn out now, but Monta Vista, they were very, very good. Front looks really good as to be expected. It's a front tire. Um, that front tire, guys, is amazing. I will be shooting another review video specifically about these tires. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet, if, if you're new here. Going to be going in depth on those tires, what I think about them, how long they've lasted, mileage, all that good stuff. <clears throat> first, let me show you what Mr. Sheets is working on over here. Uh, this is the first one of these, I think, on a two stroke that we've done. He is uh, rebuilding or actually putting filter in the fuel pump. At least I think that's what he's doing. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Zach has no idea. <laughs> he is just guessing. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what we do here. Um, but I think, guys, I'm actually interested to see. I'm pretty sure it's the same fuel pump as uh, everything else. Did you already do it? No. Oh, okay. Oh, you're just out. getting ready to take it off. What are you doing there? Attaching little things I can pull back through. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, nice. Look at Zach. Look at the big brain on Zach. <laughs> I usually I usually feed that thing through. Like, I just yank it out like a madman. But then... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll take the safety wire and feed it back through to grab it. It's actually pretty easy either way. Uh, Zach is just more forward thinking than me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let him be for a little bit. Otherwise, he's going to grab me with those pliers. Uh, but when we get that out, I'll take a look at it. I think it's going to look just like the four-stroke one. All right, Mr. Sheets has the fuel pump out. And yes, it looks exactly like the four-stroke one. <laughs> So that's actually good. I'm, I like that. I like the fact that they're using the same pump and everything. I don't know, the, the lines might be different length or something. I kind of doubt it, but they're a little bit different. We're replacing, do we have, yeah. There's that over there. And look at that, this is a KTM OEM one. My guess is uh, that is nicer than the one that was in there. The, uh, <laughs> um, but hopefully that's better than this one because this is in Turkish. Uh, <laughs> but uh, these are from Turkey and they've actually had problems with these splitting. Um, also, you see how dark that is? It's not supposed to be that dark. It's kind of interesting that they make that one black. I'm wondering if they just don't want you to see how dark it gets. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we're going to replace that filter, all the rubber bits, put that in there. Um, Mr. Dietz is not having any issues. He just wants to make sure that he doesn't have any issues. So he's doing that. I think the bike's got over 200 hours on it. Uh, he's actually got one of the good... Um, 
TPIs, he's had, I don't think, any problems. Wes, if you watch this comment, but I'm pretty sure you've had zero issues with your bike, uh, which is awesome. They're not all like that. Uh, sometimes they're kind of piles of crap, uh, but this one's been really good for him. Um, we're also doing a fork seal. We did fork seals not terribly long ago, uh, but he got a bunch of mud in one of them and it failed, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. Um, uh, and, and actually that's one of the few times that I will go forward with just doing one seal. Doesn't have enough hours on it since the first set of fork seals um, to do both of them, so we're just gonna do the one. All right guys, sorry I forgot to finish the outro uh, at the shop. I got in a hurry to get out of there for the death march. As you can imagine, I was super excited to get out and get up to camping in the beautiful mountains. By the way, that video is coming. Make sure you subscribe. It was so much fun. Also, the video of getting the bike ready, um, all the things I did to take with me and all that good stuff, that's coming. Uh, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much again for watching these videos. It really does mean the world to me that someone spends time out of their valuable day uh, watching our stuff. It does make a huge difference to us and it means a lot to me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Punk Rock Club, you know you guys are my favorite for sticking around at the end. I love you more than everyone else. Please get out, spread the gospel of two wheels, and as always, I hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes! <laughs>